Right now at 6 o'clock, we have breaking news on the roads. Route 15 south in Norwalk is closed completely. There was a crash with serious injuries. Rachel is standing by with more on how this could impact your morning commute. And lawmakers trying to beat the clock as the legislative session comes to an end. We're going to have a look at the bills that did and did not make it out. Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good morning, first at six on Fox 61 and Fox 61 Plus. We begin with that breaking news in Stratford. Thanks for being with us, America Arias. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning. Yes, Route 15 South, as we said, closed for a ways here due to a crash. So let's get right out to Fox 61's Brooke Griffin, who is by the scene. Brooke, what happened? What have police told us so far? So, so far, we don't have a lot of information. We do know that this happened around 145, and we do know that the southbound lanes are still closed. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that, according to troopers, serious injuries involved with this crash. But unfortunately, just from my experience and being here on the scene and, and seeing it with my own eyes, it looks like there's at least one person that has died due to their injuries. So this is a fatal accident. We're not sure how many people have died due to this, but we do know that there are two cars. Now, one thing I do want to mention also, so is we're not going to move over and show you any more of this crash. We're not going to show you any details of this crash because right now those cars are very evident what they are. So we don't want to put that on our airwaves and then somebody, maybe a loved one, watch this and see their car that they recognize and then find out this information prematurely and from us instead of police. So we're not going to show you anything besides this fire truck really and these first responders. We don't want to give anything away. But again, we do know that this happened around 145 and right now southbound still closed. This is just past the Sikorsky exit. So if you're going southbound, you're going to have to get off there. That's where that diversion is happening. Northbound, however, is open. It's flowing very well. There was a crash on northbound at the same time in the same spot, but that has since been cleared. It's only southbound at this point that is still closed. So again, happened around 145. We do know at least one person is dead here, and because of that, they have to reconstruct the scene. A lot of evidence, a lot of investigation happening here. They want to make sure that they get everything and know exactly why and how this crash happened between multiple vehicles. There's just two over there right now, but there were more. So we are going to make sure that we stay on top of this this morning. If you're coming southbound through this area, plan some extra time. You're going to have to take a pretty decent detour off that Sikorsky exit. It's going to be closed for several hours while police and investigators uh, keep looking into this. I'm in Stratford, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut News Station. All right, Brooke, thanks. I'll take it from here. So as Brooke mentioned, that uh, portion of Route 15, the Merritt Parkway, closed this morning due to that crash out by exit 52 and 53. So we are seeing those delays. Folks are getting a uh, detoured off of that exit. But if you want to take an alternative route, 95 is going to be your best bet. And just wanted to show you those travel speeds. We're not reporting any delays in the area as of right now. Travel speeds are around 65 miles per hour on that southbound side. We also have some delays over in Middletown this morning. Just want to alert folks to some slowdowns because of road work wrapping up now. So your city to city drive times are delayed from New Haven to Hartford at 48 minutes. Travel speeds around 48 miles per hour. Again, northbound 91. So give yourself a little bit of extra time. Matt. All right. Good morning to you, Rachel. Good morning to you at home. 6.03 and uh, after a bumpy night last night, a couple of severe storms in the evening hours as expected. We've calmed things down a bit. Now, your Thursday starts dry, may have a couple of showers at the end of the day, and it's that unsettled pattern that is taking over some scattered showers on Friday into the weekend. Mother's Day, again, opportunity for some rain. This was the last 12 hours. It's quiet now, but look at the light show, mainly in northern Connecticut. You'll see the loop go by one more time. There we go. Wow, that was that was bumpy. And then and at the shoreline, we had a little bit of activity as well. About 7, 8 o'clock, I had some hail in my backyard uh, for a quick spell last night. Things are quieter. A lot of action down over the Tennessee Valley. That's staying to the south for the most part. Here comes some rain, though, over the Great Lakes. That should be here by later on tonight. 58 degrees in Hartford, 60 in New Haven, 51 in Groton. Temperatures cooler than yesterday but still seasonal as we get to near 70 degrees as the kids get off the bus later on today. Coming up, we'll have a look at that Mother's Day weekend forecast, tell you when you're going to need the umbrella. Stand by for that. 604, back to the news desk. All right, Matt, thank you. 
The 2024 legislative session has come to an end. Lawmakers had less than 100 days this session to work to pass bills covering all sorts of topics. Those mm. topics include housing, artificial intelligence, and election security. Now, Fox 61's Lindsey Keynes live, live outside the Capitol right now with more on which bills are poised to become law and which ones just ran out of time. Lindsey. Hi, good morning. Well, lawmakers say overall they are proud of their accomplishments this legislative session, especially with the short session that we saw this year. However, other lawmakers are blaming the short clock as the reason for why many things did not end up becoming law and also blaming the Democrats for not opening up the budget for next year as another reason for why things just could not get done. But take a look at your screen. These are some of the notable measures that did pass this legislative session. Housing reform is a big one with provisions meant to provide more affordable options across the state. It allows towns to convert vacant nursing homes into multi family homes without needing to go through zoning hearings. Landlords must also give written notice of a rent increase at least 45 days before doing so. Now, the House and Senate also agreed to create a Connecticut Families and Workers account. The state comptroller will use that fund to help low-income workers, including union members who are out on strike. Lawmakers also approved a $4.4 billion bond program. That program will provide funding to address poverty across the state, pay for transportation projects, and cover the cost of renovations at the Capitol and Yukon. Now, the House and Senate also addressed election security in the wake of the ballot scandal in Bridgeport last fall. As expected, there are several measures that did not make it to the governor's desk. Now, some failed, others didn't make it to a vote. Among those that stalled, measures to address no-fault evictions, climate and the environment, street takeover enforcement, punishment for officers who falsify traffic tickets, and regulations for artificial intelligence. Democratic lawmakers say it's tough to watch some bills die that were hard fought, but they're relishing in the victories. There's always disappointment, and I think we all get elected to office with an ambition and a desire and a goal to do a whole lot more than we can otherwise accomplish for lots of reasons. And this process, I think, was set up with so many veto points, um, and, and sometimes that's good when you want something to not happen, and sometimes it kind of sucks when you can't get something that's really important to you done, too. So it's the balance that we are forced to work with. Republican leaders, on the other hand, say they are very disappointed in this short legislative session this year. And again, they're blaming the Democrats for that budget issue as a main reason why a lot of things just could not get passed without figuring out how much money is allocated for next year. It made that very difficult. Ivan Hartford this morning, Lindsay Kane, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Lindsay, thanks so much. And for more information about which bills are moving to Governor Lamont's desk and which ones are being left on the cutting room floor, you can scan the QR code right now on the left side of your screen to easily download the Fox 61 News app. You can also always head to fox61.com. The Connecticut Inspector General says a trooper's actions were justified during an arrest on Interstate 91 in Wallingford. Now, in a report that was released yesterday, the Inspector General found Trooper Joshua Wedge was justified in briefly using a chokehold on Ira Turner. Investigators said that Turner was holding another trooper in a chokehold. Now, state law doesn't allow a chokehold except if an officer is in deadly danger, and it also doesn't prohibit a chokehold if it's in defense of another officer. The report does point out that the trooper had Turner in a chokehold for a short period of time. Police in Naugatuck arrested a man they say tried to assault an officer with a knife last month. Body camera video here shows the officer's interactions with 24-year-old Kyle O'Crean. This was at Bombers Pond Park on April 25th. The officer said O'Crean would not drop the knife even when they told him to. They used a taser on him at one point, and when he refused to drop the knife, the officers shot him. O'Crean faces several charges, including attempted assault on a police officer. A busy intersection in New Britain is expected to be closed for at least one more day after a building fire earlier this week. It happened on High Street Tuesday night. And the mayor's office said part of Columbus Boulevard between High and Washington Streets will be shut down because the building isn't stable right now. In fact, bricks reportedly are falling onto the road. This is a closer look at the aftermath of the damage. We still don't know how the fire started, but we do know, thankfully, nobody was hurt. The mayor's office said a structural engineer still needs to assess the damage, but right now the building appears to be a total loss.